Have you ever had a dream of who you could become or how your life could be different? Something that calls to you and has you daydreaming of the life you could live if only... Yeah. Did it scare you? Big dreams are exciting, but sometimes they're also terrifying. Thinking about that life you want can feel like, well, like looking across the Grand Canyon. It's so far away, it just seems impossible. We look at others who have that life, those dreams, and we see their results, not their struggles. We see their highs, not their lows. We feel like they must be better, smarter, prettier, luckier worthier. And sometimes we look in the mirror and we just feel hopeless. Like, how could I ever dream of being like them? How could I ever have that life? Our brain wants to give us all the excuses, all the flaws, all our roadblocks. For me, it's always created this kind of inner tension, this inner longing, or even sometimes anxiety, because While I'm scared of following those big dreams, I'm scared of what people will think or if I'll look stupid, what are they going to say about me? What if I fail? I'm even more scared of this. What if I never become the person I know I was meant to be? So just before I turned 30, I had one of those life-changing moments, like an epiphany, I guess. (laughs) So a few years before that, I had been assaulted. And after that, I truthfully just kind of gave up on my life. And I decided, I didn't really decide, but some part of me felt like if I played small, if I hid from the world and tried to just not go after my dreams anymore, that maybe, you know, I wouldn't have any big trauma either. Maybe everything would just kind of pass me by and life could stay just even keel. If I didn't try for any highs, maybe I wouldn't have any really bad lows, but that did not work out for me. (laughs) In my giving up, I settled for a marriage that turned into a really abusive marriage. I went through two house fires where I pretty much lost everything I owned. I settled for a job that I really did not like. And so just before I turned 30, I found myself so thoroughly unhappy and depressed that I didn't think life could really get better. I felt like nothing would ever be okay again. And then one night while I was crying, laying on the bathroom floor, I just had this voice in my head that said, this is not who you were meant to be. And it was so true that it sort of shook me out of this feeling. And I thought, I can't live this life anymore, but I'm so scared of what happens if I try to go after my goals again and try to become the person that I was meant to be. And it was not easy, but over the years now, since then, I have seen my life tiny step by tiny step completely transform into something that most days I'm excited to wake up to and that I'm grateful for. I'm joyful, I'm happy, and everything has changed and turned around from that moment where I felt hopeless. And so much of it has to do with making a decision to actually go after my dreams and to become the person that I really want to be. At that point in my life, when I made that decision and I was at the lowest lows, any kind of change or like hitting these goals of who I wanted to be in the world was like standing at the bottom of some giant mountain. And it just felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have the strength. I don't know if I have the endurance. I don't even know if I can take a single step toward that dream. But I knew that I had to try because the alternative was living this life where I knew I was going to regret, I knew I was going to be unhappy, and where I really was dreading waking up every single day. And I thought, I can't live that life either. So we're going to try for these goals, even if I have to go really slow. And I, I did go slowly. I made small changes and then found the courage to make bigger changes and eventually came back to a dream that I had had from when I was a little girl, and that was to be a writer. And as I started journaling, the more I started reconnecting with that part of me, and then I started reading books again and allowing myself just bit by bit to 
reignite this dream of writing books. And I had no idea how in the world I was ever going to learn how to write a book. I had never tried before. I had no idea how I was going to get my books in the hands of readers or even what that entailed. But somehow I did it and it wasn't easy. And, you know, sometimes I think we can look at the lives of people who have what we want or they're living the kind of life that we think we want. And it can seem like it was easy for them. Like, they don't go through the same struggles. They don't wake up every day feeling anxiety or they don't have trauma in their past that they're still trying to work through. And obviously I can't speak for anyone else, but I can tell you that my journey from that floor to where I am now was not all rainbows and sunshine. It wasn't all like clear blue skies. It was getting over my anxiety. It was going to therapy. It was dealing with the shadows of my past and trying to find the person that I wanted to be somewhere deep inside me. And it was hard work. It was a lot of learning how to do things like how to write books, how to create a website. It was a lot of making mistakes and then trying to figure out how to untangle myself from those mistakes or try to recover from those mistakes. It was a lot of doing things that I was terrified to do, putting myself out there, putting my face on YouTube, my thoughts on YouTube. But these things were all scary. And yet I think sometimes even now when I look to the people that have the life that I want, Somehow my brain convinces me that I can't be like them because I'm broken or I'm not pretty enough or I'm not lucky enough or I'm not, um, you know, it's easy for them and I don't have what it takes. But the truth is, that's just an excuse that our fear tells us when we look at other people. It's like they didn't have it easy either. They had to overcome a lot. Like every person who has achieved great things has overcome something in their lives to get there. Nobody really gets there easier, at least nobody I know. And I think that sometimes our brains can convince us otherwise. So I wanted to share with you, since we're on the eve of my self-publishing course, closing for enrollment for the rest of the year, uh, Publish and Thrive opens on Saturday. I thought that it would be good to kind of talk about my journey, but specifically to share with you five things that I have learned along the way, like big lessons that have really changed my life in case you're sitting here in a similar place and thinking, I have all these dreams that I want to go for, and I'm just not sure how to get from where I am now to where I want to be. And I hope that some of these tips will be meaningful for you. Number one, there's no time limit on your success. I think sometimes our brains can convince us that what we want has to be achieved as quickly as possible, or it's never going to happen. We can think we're too old. It's too late for me. I'm not good enough. Um, if it doesn't happen by next year, then it's never going to happen. Sometimes we can see what other people have accomplished or in the writing world, man, you go into some Facebook groups of writers and they'll tell you how their very first year they made a million dollars or something. And you just think, oh my gosh, if I don't find success that quickly, then it's never going to happen for me. And we don't as often hear the stories of the people that worked for five, six, seven years before they even started finding their audience or making money or getting a track, you know, traction or something like that, or before they had their first best selling series. But there are a lot of people out there that it took them years of hard work or years of failing and trying and trying to convince themselves to move forward before they finally found something that really clicked with people. And so I think a lot of times we try to give ourselves this unrealistic pressure of if it doesn't happen fast, if I don't get moving as quickly as possible, it's over for me. And then maybe we find some sort of motivation enough to move forward. But then when we slow down because we got sick or we lost momentum or we got scared or we self-sabotaged, which is my kind of number one flaw, then we convince ourselves that we're not good enough and we're not worthy and it's just never going to happen and it's too late. And that can be a really difficult and negative pattern to get into. And so what I started telling myself is this, there is no time limit on my success. Just because I haven't found it today doesn't mean that that's going to be my story a year from now. And as long as I keep moving forward, even if it's slow, one tiny step trudging through the snow every day, then I'm going to get where I want to go. Now, practically, realistically, I know that someday I will die. And this is 
basically the time limit on my success. But until that moment, which none of us knows when that will come, I am going to do everything I can to move forward and take care of myself while I'm reaching for those goals. And I just keep telling myself it's never too late. There's no time limit on my success. And I know that my greatest success is still waiting for me somewhere in the future. The second lesson I learned the hard way is that no dream or milestone can make me happy, not in and of itself. Truly, the lesson that I've learned is that it's the reaching for the goal and the growth that happens and the person that I become along the way that is what brings me fulfillment and joy. But expecting that a new house or hitting number one in the Amazon store, which I have never done, by the way, hopefully someday. But if I set this goal and then I think that will make me happy, if I can just achieve X, that's going to be the thing that'll make me happy. And so I was always pushing my happiness one step into the future or even 10 steps into the future. And I would say, if we could just move out of this tiny little townhouse I would be so much happier. And so I would push myself beyond what was healthy for my mental health and for my physical health to try to find that success. And then when we finally did move out of that tiny townhouse, I moved into a bigger house and then still felt empty. And I didn't understand why. So I would just push for another goal. I'd say, well, then I must need to hit this next milestone. And I think sometimes my uh, tendency is to try to pick some future goal and say, if I could just have that, that's when I would be happy. Like this is big enough. And I think what I realized along the way is that I was equating that next milestone somehow with my own self-worth. And I was saying somewhere deep in my mind, subconsciously, I was saying, if I could just have a bigger, fancier house or I could just be number one at Amazon, then people would know that I was good enough and I would know, and it would prove to me that I deserved it, that I'm good enough, that I am worthy. And what I had to realize several years ago, which was a difficult lesson to learn, was that no outer validation is ever going to make me happy. Even seeing your book in a bookstore is something that is a moment in time. It's something that can make you happy for a minute and you should celebrate that. It's exciting. Every milestone is exciting, but it's not going to cause you long-term joy and happiness just because you hit a milestone. If it did, then every celebrity and every person who ever made a million dollars would be happy for the rest of their lives. And we know that that's not true. So instead, what I started focusing on is I've got the big goal, but I try to focus on day to day, every day, finding my joy, taking care of myself, allowing myself to learn and grow and trying to be kind to myself and learn to find that day to day joy in the process, in the reaching for the goals and in the growth. That's where my joy is going to come from, not from just one in a million milestone that I might hit and understanding that I don't have to prove myself to anyone in order to be worthy, that I am worthy. And this is something I'm still working on today. It is not always easy to feel worthy and feel good, especially when there's people on the internet and YouTube and and anywhere I put myself out are going to criticize. And sometimes that comes back to me like, well, but if I could just achieve this next milestone, it would prove to them that I'm okay, that I'm good. And uh, that's part of my journey even still is understanding that I don't have to prove myself to anyone and that criticism will come, but that my truth and my joy has to come from within. Lesson number three is kind of tied to that of this idea of keep your eye on that big dream, that big milestone, but celebrate every tiny step along the way. Because another thing that I think a lot of us can tend to do when we're going for our dreams is we think if it's not that, then it's not good enough. So I found myself uh, a few years ago constantly saying things like when someone would say, well, but wow, you sold this many books. And I would say, well, yeah, I sold this many, but look at all these people who've sold 5 million. Like I'm nowhere near as good as they are. Or it would be like, you hit number one at the Apple store. But then in my brain, I'm going, yeah, but it's, I didn't even hit the top 100 at, at Amazon. And so those kinds of things would constantly come into my head of like, yes, I hit this milestone, but it's nowhere near. Like I got 60,000 subscribers, but I'm still 40,000 away from a hundred thousand, or I'm still this or that. And I would downplay 
the milestones that I had worked so hard to achieve. And I started asking myself, why am I doing this to myself? And I think it goes back to that feeling of worthiness of like, this is the big goal that I want. And it also goes back to comparing myself to other people rather than thinking back to who I used to be when I wanted to be here. So I have found more joy if I hit, let's say I hit just hit 60,000 subscribers on YouTube. I am not going to find joy in that if I look to everybody who has 2 million and I compare myself to that and say, well, I'm not them, so I must suck, right? Instead, it's been so much more joyful for me to reflect on my past and say, oh my gosh, when I first started this channel, I never dreamed I would get to 60K. This is so exciting. And this is another step on my path toward, I don't even dream of millions of subscribers, but man, 100,000 would be so good. And so it's that, that path and understanding that I just crossed another piece. I just took another step and being proud of that journey from where I've come rather than looking to the person I want to be or the other people that I want to compare myself to. And so I think that we can apply this to so many different places in our lives. It's like, I have to keep my eye on that big dream, that 100,000 subscribers or that like top 100 Amazon launch. It's really so much more fun to look forward to that big milestone rather than to compare myself to other people or to focus on the gap between where I am now and where I want to be. When I focus on the gap, I start to feel hopeless because it starts to feel like that mountaintop again, like, oh my gosh, I don't have the energy. There's so much work. And I start to focus focus on how far away I am from it. But instead, if I can focus on where I am now compared to where I used to be, I can focus on the progress and the growth. And then I can look forward to, wow, look at how much of this gap I have closed so far. So it's really a perspective shift. I still need to focus on that future milestone because that's what motivates me and gets me up in the morning. It's like, it's a dream of mine to launch a book of my own into the top 100 on Amazon. I have hit the top 100 on Amazon multiple times, but I've never like launched a full time, full price new release book into the top 100. And it's a dream of mine. But if I focused on how many other people are doing it, even authors who have only been around for a year or two, I could start to get really depressed and feel really down on myself. But I choose not to allow myself to go down that path. And instead, I focus on okay, what can I do? How can I go from where I am right now to a launch that's going to get me there? And that starts to get me more excited for my writing, for my promo, for everything that's in between. And then I start to think about how far I've come from that day I was sitting on that floor and I can begin to really see my own growth, not in comparison to other people, but just my own personal path. And so focusing and keeping that dream big but focusing every day and celebrating the small milestones, that's where joy is for me. Number four, you don't have to be happy and motivated every minute of every day. I think this is a product too sometimes of living an online life where we see everybody else's highlight reels and so forth is that we think that in order to get where we want to go or to show up online and build a community, we have to be happy and smiling and refreshed and energetic every single day. And that's just not a realistic thing for a human. Now, maybe that's the only side you show to other people and that would be fine. But so often we do follow influencers and authors and entrepreneurs and people that are living their dream lives. And all we see is the happy, excited, the travel, the laughter, the matching outfits, like whatever it is. We see all that stuff. And then we compare it to our everyday lives. And we think, gosh, maybe I am, there's something wrong with me that I wake up with anxiety every day. Or maybe there's something wrong with me that I wake up with these low energy days. Like I'm never going to be like them, or I'm never going to have the life I wanted because I don't feel motivated every day. And the truth is that I don't know anybody who's motivated every single day. I don't know anybody that doesn't have some level of anxiety or low energy days or days when they're sick or days when things are going hard or their mind gets the best of them. Most people I know are just like me when you really get to know them. They have their fears. They have their doubts. They're scared of losing their success or not being able to maintain it. They're you know, they have days where they're not as motivated. So don't put that pressure on yourself when you start thinking about going for your dreams, that you have to be on every day, that you have to be perfect, that you have to 
move every post-it note down your Kanban board or that you have to check every single thing off your to-do list. Putting that level of pressure on ourselves just is like packing ourselves up with this huge weight as we're trying to climb the mountain. So just let that weight go and instead allow yourself to just be human. We're going to have periods where we're not as productive or motivated. We're going to have times when we self-sabotage or we make mistakes or where our mind gets the best of us. And so it's really not about being happy and motivated and perfect every day. It's just about not giving up and believing in yourself and knowing that as long as you take care of yourself and you continue to grow in your heart, that you are going to take those steps when you're ready and not giving up on yourself. It's a big part of going for your dreams. And number five is you just have to do it scared. I know that sometimes when we think about these big dreams and we do think about that gap between here's where I am and here's where I want to be someday. And I don't see any way in hell I'm ever going to get there. I mean, even as far as I've come, every time you hit a new level, you start to see new dreams, right? And then there's always going to be a gap between where you are now and where you want to be. So it's like sitting right here and thinking, well, someday I want to have a top 100 best-selling book and I want to have, you know, a TV show and I want to have a hundred thousand subscribers. Like I can look at that future. And there are moments where I feel like, okay, the gap is like this huge chasm between where I am now and where I want to be. And it can feel hopeless, right? It can feel very scary. It's like, okay, we're standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon, kind of looking out and thinking, how am I going to leap from here all the way to that other side? How am I going to find the energy? How am I going to find the skills? How am I going to be the person I have to be to live that life? And it can feel terrifying. And just know that there are two options at that point. You can either be too scared to move forward and spend the rest of your life regretting it and watching all these other people that have gone after it and wishing that you could do it. Or you could just do it scared and just take that first step, take that leap of faith and believe in yourself and say, okay, this is going to be impossible, but somehow step by step, milestone by milestone, moment by moment, I'm going to move forward towards these dreams, no matter what anybody else thinks of me, no matter if I look stupid, no matter how many times I fall, this is what I want. And my heart and my gut tells me that this is something that I want, that I need, that this is who I am in the world. I'm going to keep moving forward toward it no matter what. And I think those are some of the biggest lessons that I have learned personally on my path to where I am today, which is still nowhere near where I want to be. But man, it is so far from where I used to be. And I am celebrating that. And I'm really proud of that. And if you have big dreams, then I hope that some of this has inspired you to take that first step toward that dream today. It's not about what anyone else thinks. It's not about being perfect or happy every single day. It's not about motivation. It's just about knowing somewhere in your soul that you were meant for bigger things and that in order to get there, all you have to do is one tiny step at a time and understanding that those small steps lead to a lifetime of accomplishment. I believe in you. And if your dream just happens to be to self-publish and to make a name for yourself as an author and get your books out into the world, then you've got four days left, three days left to join my Publish and Thrive course. I'm only offering it once this year, which I know is disappointing for a lot of people. I usually do it twice, but I am making space in my schedule which is scary for me, honestly, because I um, have spent really the last several years of my life building these courses and focusing here instead of focusing on my writing. But I feel that call toward those big dreams of I do want to be a top 100 bestselling author. I want to hit the USA today. And even if that makes me feel silly, and even if people are going to go off to some gossip website and talk about me later today, I am still going to do it and I'm going to do it scared and I'm going to reach for those goals. But in order to do it, I know that I need to make space for my writing this year. And so that is a decision that I have made that is scary, but necessary for me. And I'm going to share that journey with you guys here on this channel. But if you have been wanting to take that course, Publish and Thrive, it is totally brand new. I have re-recorded the entire course and it is better than ever. And I have really put so much of my heart and soul and information, like everything you need to know to 
to have a successful career in today's industry is in this class. And I just would love for you to join us if this is your dream. Let this be your first big step is making a commitment to learning the skills that you need to know to make this career fly. So I hope that you'll join us. We start on Saturday. This upcoming Saturday, we also have our double down day. If you are writing, come join the Heart Breathings writing community and join our live sprint. So I will link that down below as well as the course. There are some payment plans for this course as well. There's even a 12 month payment plan so that it's more affordable for everybody. So come join us. I would love to see you. If you have any questions about the class, don't hesitate to post them in the comments below or send me an email, sarah at heartbreathings.com. I will also be back with our February notebook challenge coming up soon. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening to my story. I hope that some part of it has helped motivate or inspire you to move towards your own dreams. You can do this. I know you can. All right. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hmm.